On today's episode of Hackbyte, we're going to be demonstrating the Log4Shell exploit against an application that's using a vulnerable version of Log4J. Log4j is a Java-based framework that makes it easy for websites and applications to store information. This framework is found across millions of devices, including applications like Minecraft, or even an operating system that's powering one of the Mars rovers. However, besides just logging and storing simple information, Log4j also includes a lookup feature that allows it to download resources from external websites or even other Java-based applications. A recent exploit called Log4Shell hijacks this exact lookup feature, allowing attackers to execute arbitrary code on vulnerable websites and applications by simply pasting a string into online chats or login forms that contain a link to their own malicious server. Today, we're gonna to be demonstrating an attack against Ghidra, an open source reverse engineering tool by the NSA, to see just how easy it is for an attacker to compromise and fully take over a system running a vulnerable version of Log4j. To follow along, all you're gonna need is a computer running Linux. To follow along with today's demonstration, you can find the source code hosted at github.com slash cosmer slash log4j shell proof of concept. Now, as you can see, this repository contains a few different demonstrations for the log4shell exploit. For example, you can see this Minecraft proof of concept where an attacker can simply copy the following short string of text and paste it inside of the Minecraft chat. Now, after pasting this string of text inside of the chat down here, this will now basically trick the log4j software that's currently logging input into executing arbitrary code, which you can see the attacker is now using in order to gain a directory listing of internal files and settings for this Minecraft server, as well as even run some other arbitrary commands like ping, which allows them to communicate with an external IP address. Now, of course, this attack works against other applications that are using the Log4j framework. For example, this vulnerable website, which you can find hosted under the target folder on this repository, which is probably a more realistic implementation of what this would look like if we were running this exploit against an actual website or web server. So you can see they first start by spinning up an LDAP server and grabbing the same string of text that was used to exploit the Minecraft server. And they can go ahead and just paste this inside of a login form on the website, which then allows the attacker to execute arbitrary code through a reverse shell that was established on the server that's propping up this website. Now, the demonstration that we're gonna be taking a look at today is gonna to be running one of these attacks against an open source reverse engineering software called Ghidra, which is probably one of the safest and easiest ways to demonstrate how this attack works. So before we get started, you're gonna to want to download the source code for this project by copying the following URL, opening up a Linux terminal, and running the following command, which is gonna be git clone, followed by the address of the repository, which you can see I already have installed. Now, if you don't have the git command installed, you can do this on Linux just by running sudo apt install git. And then you can also go ahead and install the other tools we'll be covering today, which are Python 3 and also Netcat. So now that you've installed these utilities, the first step to executing this attack is to first spawn up our own web server that's essentially gonna trick Log4j into downloading some arbitrary code from our malicious web server. So in order to do this, we can go ahead and copy the following command here, which is sudo python3 tech m http server 80. So I can go ahead and copy this command and then change directories to the proof of concept code by typing cd log4j shell proof of concept. And you can see it has a list of the files that were hosted on this GitHub page. I can now go ahead and just paste that command and let's just start up a local web server on port 80. I'm actually gonna go ahead and change this to port 8081 since this is not occupied at the moment by my computer. So after running this command, we now have a web server ready to go on our computer that's currently hosted on the following port. So after starting up this local web server, we're gonna go ahead and create something called an LDAP server, which we'll do through Python. And this is essentially a special type of server that can send information to applications, which in our case is going to be a malicious Java file that contains the code which will allow us to gain access to a web server or whatever is running underneath the application we're trying to exploit. So the next step into executing this attack is to go ahead and set up a netcat listener, which will be the first step to establishing remote access to the server we're trying to exploit. So this will set up something called a reverse shell and just by copying the following command here, this will instruct Netcat to start listening in on port 9001 on our computer and waits for another service to connect to it, which in this demonstration is going to be terminal output from the server we're trying to hack. So now that we have both the web server set up and also a reverse shell listener in Netcat, we can go ahead and fire up the exploit proof of concept. 
So in order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and pop open a new terminal window. And we're gonna go ahead and run the following code under poc.py. So in order to do this, I can just simply run python3 proofofconcept.py. And it's just as simple as pasting some following parameters that let it know what ports to scan on and also to host the LDAP server on. So first we're gonna start by entering our local IP address, which is gonna be 127.0.0.1, or you can also just use the alias localhost. Next, we're gonna go ahead and set up the listener port, which if you remember, we set up on port 8081 through Python. And then finally, we can go ahead and plug in the listener port, which is gonna go ahead and connect us to the reverse shell if the application successfully logs our log4j command. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this to port 9001. So you can see that it constructs the following string here, which is essentially just a variable in Java that says use the JNDI protocol or Java naming and directory protocol in order to communicate with the following LDAP server at this domain name, which in our case is localhost. Now, since log4j wants to log and store Java-based information, since it's a Java framework, the special LDAP server that we set up will return a Java class, or basically just a bunch of executable code, which you can see that Python created here under the exploit.class and exploit.java files, which log4j will try to run internally and attempt to process. Now, after copying the following string, we're ready to fire it off at vulnerable log4j based systems. So for this demonstration, we're going to be using an older version of Ghidra, which is at version 10.0.3. That's still susceptible to this attack, which you can go ahead and download from their releases page here on GitHub, which I will also link in the description below. Now I can go ahead and just click on the download as zip file, open up my file manager, and then extract it to a local folder. Now I can go ahead and just open up this folder in a new terminal window. And in order to fire up the Ghidra application, all you have to do is just run dot slash followed by the name of the application, which is going to be Ghidra run. Now bringing back up the terminal window where we started the web server, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down here into the corner so you can see the output from this command when log4j attempts to store this following string. So if I just go ahead and hit enter, you can see that running this string through the text box gets us a callback on the LDAP server, which redirects to a Java object at the following exploit.class file, which Ghidra tries to execute. Now, this Java file can contain any arbitrary malicious code, but in our case, the exploit.java file or exploit.class file, which was generated by Python, contains code that allows us to set up a reverse shell in order to communicate back to the attacker's computer. So if we check out the netcat session that we spawned earlier, you can see that we've received a connection at the following IP address at 127.0.0.1. Now, of course, since we're running this locally, this IP address is just my local host. But of course, this attack can be scaled to run against things like AWS servers or even juicier targets who are susceptible to this vulnerability. As you saw in today's demonstration, applications or websites that are running vulnerable versions of log4j make it extremely easy for attackers to be able to compromise these systems. While the demonstration I showed you today is perfectly safe and legal to replicate since we tested this out against an open source app that's running locally on my computer, testing this exploit against systems or servers that you don't have permission to attack is not permissible because crimes are illegal. If you enjoyed this video and you have any feedback, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Alex Lind or drop a comment to let me know. As always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Hack5. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.